Um, well, that, that was another amazing part of the story that it was just such a leap of faith because when, um, and I, I don't know if I got, got this far, but about the bone marrow transplant for, after we went for the consultation and they told us everything about the bone marrow transplant and the statistics, for the first time since I had been diagnosed, I just was overcome with a sense of dread and anxiety. And it's like I knew that if I went through this treatment, it would be the end for me. I just, I knew it was a dead end. Um, but then I didn't know, I didn't know anything about any alternatives at that point. And for several days, I was just, I was unable to function. I was just consumed with anxiety and fear. And then after a couple of days, just seemingly out of the blue, I had this thought come to my mind. I realized I don't have to do this. Just because the doctors are recommending this doesn't mean I have to do it. It's still my choice. I can just tell them no. And when I, when I came to that realization, it was like the world lifted off my shoulders. I just, I just, I couldn't believe how, um, how, how just, how, how much weight that took off my shoulders and, but yet at the same time, um, I realized the doctors were going to tell me, well, if you don't try this bone marrow transplant, you're going to die from cancer for sure. And so it was a very difficult decision. And I, and I asked an old friend how to, how to make a difficult decision like that. And he gave me some advice and told me basically what I would do is make the decision, but not act on it. Make the decision you believe is the right one. Don't act on it and just pray and sit on it for 24 hours and ask God to either give you a peace or let you know you're making the wrong decision. And Linda and I started praying about it, and I didn't even get all the way through the prayer. We, I was just basically praying, Lord, we're going we're gonna to tell them we're not doing the bone marrow transplant. We're not doing any more chemo. We're just going to put it completely in your hands, and, and we're just going to pray. We just need you to give us a peace and let us know we're making the right decision. And before we even finished praying, I was just overcome by the peace of God. That just it was it was amazing. It was it was a complete and utter peace, even though I knew the doctors were going to tell me you're going to die. And I just but I knew it was the right decision. And so shortly thereafter, about a week later, after we made this decision and told the doctors, a friend from church gave me a book that talks about an alternative treatment for cancer that a large part of it is a strict nutrition and then there's also a substance called laetrile which is an alternative treatment that's um, not widely used in this country but some people have used it and so that's how I found out about it, it was basically it was like a, a leap of faith it was only after I made that step to step out and say okay I'm walking away from medicine it was then that I found out about the alternative Once I realized I was getting better, it was a, probably a six-month process where I started getting better, and then when the the alternative treatment seemed to really work for me, and I, I started feeling great, um, we we would share this story with with new people we'd meet or old friends, and everyone was so amazed with the story and how how it all came about that I I felt like from very early on I need to write a book about this experience, and but. Shortly after I started getting better, my wife Linda and I, who had done a lot of work with troubled teenagers in group homes, went ahead and started getting involved in that work. And so we were very busy with that and just didn't have a whole lot of time to write a book. And I, I probably could have gotten it done sooner if I had even just worked a few hours here and there, but I just never did get started on it. And then last year we were working at a group home and just kind of out of the blue, we got terminated, we lost our jobs, couldn't find another job immediately. And we had a friend from church who had a cabin, a little two bedroom cabin in the, in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, let us rent that for a while. So here I was in a, a, ca a little secluded spot in the mountains in a cabin and didn't have a job, didn't have any anywhere to go. And it was like God was saying, okay, you have no more excuses, go ahead you know, and write that book.